What's up everybody? It's Scapegoat here, and in this tutorial we are on part 3 of our Odin 2 series, and we're going to be going over the filter section and the amplifier and distortion section. So without further ado, let's get started. Moving over to the filter section, if you look in the corner here, we have a little drop down menu here, and that allows us to select various different filters here we have to choose from just like the oscillator section where there's common parameters here we have common controls that are going to be crossed over on all these different sets so the first common control we have is the filter frequency which is essentially our cutoff frequency depending on where you have this adjusted essentially this frequency value is going to mark where the frequency is attenuated by 3 db you also have your filter resonance this is going to increase the peak of the filter here up here in the corner corner you have the filter velocity which is essentially going to if you have a MIDI keyboard with velocity you can adjust the filter based on the amount of velocity that's applied so if you're hitting the note harder per se you can have the filter open up or if you're hitting the note softer you can have it more closed stuff like that you have your filter envelope which it controls the amount of the filter envelope that is applied to the frequency then you have a MIDI keyboard knob which depending on what setting you have this set up it's going to allow you to have the filter more closed to say more lower notes and more open at higher notes and then you have your filter gain which it's going to regulate the volume of the filter and that's done in decibels lastly here you do have a saturation knob which is going to allow you to apply a little bit of distortion to the filter and that's done with a hyperbolic tangent function so moving over to our filter types, we essentially have our staples of the synth, which is the low pass, the band pass, and high pass filters. They both come in a 12 and 24 dB variant, and they are essentially virtual analog emulations of a classic filter. Next, you have your SEM12 filter, which is another classic synthesizer filter. And one thing that is unique about this one is it has this notch transition, SEM transition knob. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to fade from a low pass filter over a notch filter to a high pass filter next you have your diode ladder filter which is essentially a virtual analog emulation of a filter that was on another classic analog synthesizer the ladder on this filter is a 24 db but the characteristics of this are supposed to be a little bit more aggressive compared to your classic ladder next you have the krg35 lp filter and there's also a high pass variant of this as well and this is another classic analog emulation what makes this one unique is when you crank up the resonance on this one, it can really give you a unique and aggressive sound. The next filter type we have is the comb filter, and essentially the comb filter is a tuned delay module. An input signal is fed into a delay line, which creates echoes that sound back after a set amount of time. The resonance parameter for the comb filter also controls how much the delayed signal is fed back into the delay line, and that is going to create the feedback loop. You also have the comb polarity, which controls whether the insertion of the signal into the delay line is positive or inverted, so it's essentially going to change the frequency behavior. When you invert the polarity, you can tend to eliminate deep frequencies. So next we have the formant filter, and the formant filter is essentially emulating vowel sounds that correspond to human speech. So using this transition knob, you can freely transition between two different vowel sounds. So you have your vowel one and vowel two, which using these arrows you can select, and then your formant transition here in the middle will help you transition between the two vowels. Next you have the ring modulator, and essentially what's cool about the ring modulator is that you can think of it as an oscillator that's disguised as a filter. So what it does is it multiplies the input signal with an internal sine oscillator. This is also known as amplitude modulation. And so you have this frequency knob here, which is going to control the frequency of that internal oscillator. And then you have your amount, which is going to control the amount of ring modulation that's applied to the sound. Moving on to the amplifier and distortion section here in the center, you have your amp gain, which essentially is a volume knob. You have a pan knob, which can allow you to pan the sound within the stereo field and you also have a velocity knob as well which can make your sound more sensible to MIDI velocity. Beneath that you have the distortion which you can enable on or off by clicking the distortion button here. You have a boost which is going to boost the gain of the incoming wave. Then you have a dry wet which is going to 
apply the amount of distortion you'd like to apply to the sound. Right here you have a drop down menu and this controls your distortion algorithm. So you have the clamp which clamps the signal once it surpasses the threshold. You have the fold which the fold which is going to fold the wave once it surpasses the threshold. And then you have the zero and that pulls the wave to zero once it surpasses the threshold. This one is going to be one of the more stronger of the distortion algorithms. And that basically covers it for this section. In the next video, we are going to be going over the effects section. So stay posted for that one. I hope you found this one helpful. Until next time.